Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Winnipeg Jets franchise mode here in NHL 24. So this is the last of the pre-recorded episodes. We are going to be taking on the Edmonton Oilers in the first round of the playoffs. We did not make any trades at all this season, any wa uh, waiver pickups, anything like that. We just wanted to roll with this young team and see what happens. We had a kind of an average season, I'd say 44, 28, and 10. It's not the fanciest record in the world, but it got us into the playoffs. But there was definitely a lot of positives to take away from our offensive production of our top young talent. So I think our team is definitely a lot better than they look in terms of record-wise. As you can see, when Misa almost had 100 points, and then you had a bunch of guys on 70-plus points like Lucius, Stankoven, Irving on another 40-goal season, Hellenius, Perfetti, even Luke Misa was great, Groshek was solid. Like, in general, the offensive depth score was great from this team. And then defensively, Kairou was great again. Vandermeer had 32 points in his rookie season, which was nice. And then you had also had, like, Hainola and Palin doing decently, too. So, I am excited to see what this team could do in the playoffs. But, obviously, we are still a few pieces probably away from being a good playoff team. So, if we get knocked out in the first round, it's not a big problem. But it would be nice for our team to maybe pull off an upset or two and uh, get some valuable experience. So that way we are kind of more prepared for what's to come with our team being a contender. Because we are going to be taking on a tough Edmonton Oilers team. They won 51-26-5 this season. And obviously they are led by Settle and McDavid. And uh, yeah, that's definitely going to be a combo that's going to be tough for us to shut down. But uh, pretty much similar to when we played Colorado in the prior playoffs and stuff like that. It's a valuable learning experience for the young players. So... Yeah, shutting down these two guys is going to be very tough. They do also have our former guy in Alex Barabanov, who has been very good next to McDavid in Dreisaitl, apparently. As you can see, he hit 100 points this year. And with us, his most points, I guess he hit, was 53. Yeah, 53. So he has been much better with, obviously, his be the best two players in the league, arguably. So, yeah, that's a very good top line. And then they also have some solid depth on like their second, third, and even on their fourth line because you can see 41-year-old Brad Marchand is there, which is kind of nuts. Uh, from a defensive standpoint, obviously Evan Bouchard's a stud and Darnell Nurse is really good. The other ones are pretty much average, but it is an okay defensive core. And in their goaltending, they do have Philip Gustafson and Matt Guzda. And I believe, if I remember right, they are the defending cup champions. I'm not too sure yet because I am pre-recording this episode literally right after the last episode. And I haven't even had time to check yet, but... I'll probably put up a note if they are the defending cup champions or not, which is, uh, I think, going to be a tough task for us, obviously, if they are the defending champions. But uh, let's get into this and see what ends up happening. Like I said, I don't really have much of an expectation on our team yet, uh, but I think as early as next season or as, as early as this offseason is when we decide to start making some decisions with some younger prospects. Do we flip them for uh, good players to bring into our lineup? Or do we just keep rolling with this youth movement until everybody's ready to go in terms of their positioning? But uh, let's get into this first game. We obviously do not have home ice advantage, likely for most of this playoff run. But let's see what we could do here. Game one in Edmonton. At least we're not too far from our own barn ourselves since we're in Canada still. Let's see if we could take a 1-0 series lead and surprise the Oilers quite a bit. First period of game number one. And it's 2-1 Oilers, McDavid and Olsen. We couldn't even hold McDavid off for five minutes. Not really a surprise, though. Olsen then scored, and Perfetti scored for us. Route shooting him 17-7, surprisingly, after one. So, Gustafson had a really good first period for them, and we could have easily had the lead after one, but uh, their goaltending has been good. Ours hasn't been good so far. Then again, Dag is still a young goalie, learning from experience. He wasn't really good last year in the playoffs against Colorado. So he might not be the best playoff goaltender, but he is getting experience, which hopefully should make him better. And then our offense needs to be much better in terms of actually getting goals past Gustafson. But Gustafson's been a very solid goaltender for them, so not really too surprised. Let's see if we could tie this game up in the second period. Second period, 4-2. They always double us up, it seems like now. Olsen made it 3-1, Groshek made it 3-2, and a late goal of 3-33 left by Nick Perbix, of all people. Rauschim 30 to 16, but we're down by two goals. Not really liking the way uh, Dag has been playing in this game because he's allowed one goal every four shots, pretty much, which is not great. And we're scoring one goal every 15 shots. Let's see if we can somehow claw back into this in the third period. Hey, Luke Misa scores immediately to start the third. That's a good way to start it off, considering we have so many shots on goal. Can we tie it? 
We need one more goal. Penalty kill. Nicely done. Penalty killers into the final 10 minutes of the third period. Yakala scores his first career playoff goal. And Aiden Irving shows up in the playoffs to give us the lead. We were down 4-2. to two, And we have cheesed the Oilers in game one. We were trailing badly. But we did play them by a long shot, shot-wise. And we had a great third period. And we win 5-4 on a power play goal from Irving, who has been kind of struggling in the playoffs before this year. So it is good to see him getting going in game number one. We outshot them 39-30, win by a goal. And uh, wow, that's a big stunner of a win. Oilers fans would definitely not like that, I don't think, considering they had a 4-2 lead going into the third period. But Perfetti from Alanius and Galvis, Groshek from Misa and Kairou, that being Luke Misa. Luke Misa from Groshek and Hainola, uh, Yakula from Kairou and Palin. And the game-winning goal, Irving from Hellenius and Michael Misa. So shout out to the Misas for doing their job. Three stars of the game is Olsen Perbix for them and then Groshik for us. Let me take a look at the player stats on our team because I am curious on that. A lot of guys on two points, which is nice. Any badly minus guys? Only a couple minus ones. And yeah, Gabriel Dag wasn't the best, but he got the win. So we'll take it. We probably didn't deserve to win that game, but uh, we definitely showed up in the third period when it mattered most. So, hey, we won a game on the road. That's a very good start to this playoff run. Obviously, like I said, it's a good, valuable experience for the guys to get some playoff Ws and kind of get that confidence for when we actually go for a cup. Because I don't think we're going to be a cup contender this year, but you never know. Anything could happen in this uh, game, it seems like. So, let's keep the team the exact same for game two. We might make some adjustments depending on how we play defensively in this game, but... Let's see if we could uh, stun the Oilers again and get another win in their building because that would be a huge way to start off the round one. Okay, first period of game number two. And it's 1-0 Edmonton. LeBanc scores. We're being outshot 13-7, so that's more like it in a sense where they're actually outshooting us because last time it was a big uh, change in terms of shots. Like, we outshot them 17-7. So now they're actually playing like they should be, and their goaltending is still playing relatively good. So... Obviously, we know that we took this game over in the third period of last game, so hopefully we don't wait too long to do it again. Hopefully, we could get going in terms of offense in that second period. And hopefully, we don't lose four straight games because that would kind of suck. Second period. 2 nothing. Oh, no. I wouldn't put this game definitely on Dag. Dag's playing actually probably our best player right now. He's made 27 saves through two periods, but we have yet to score. So, we see he makes it 2 nothing. Can we find our offense in the third period like last game, or are we going to have a tie series headed home? Let's see what happens here. See if we can get at least maybe a goal to get us back into this one, or give us some confidence at least for next game. Penalty kill. It's a long penalty kill. I don't know who took that penalty, but please don't do that. <laughs> oh, I meant to move my face over. Oops. Let's move my face over here. Final few minutes here, and a big goal from Hellenius pulls us within one. Can we get a tying goal? No, we cannot. We lose 2-1. to one. So that's another close game, though. And I will definitely take that. Great goaltending from uh, Dag in that one. He made 41 saves to hold us in the game the entire time. But our offense did not show up like they did last game, unfortunately. But, hey, that's still not a bad game to have. Good response defensively, but the offense needs to improve a bit. So Hellenius from Perfetti and Stankoven is our only goal. And, yeah, Gabriel Dag got first star in that loss, so... He definitely tried to get us a win there, which is great to see considering, like I said, he hasn't had the best playoff success in the past, but he did in that game. And he's been decent here early on so far. He's allowed uh, six goals in two games. We've scored six goals in two games. So it's been pretty even matchup here in these first two games so far. Skirbik is back for the AHL. That's good because the AHL team is also on bounce of the playoffs. Holy crap. Jacuizzi jumped to an 80. Okay, we have a bunch of guys that might make the NHL team again next year. Because Cam is getting close. Ranta, not there yet. Barlow is still more of a depth option. We have Jacuizzi. These guys were just depth pieces to bring in. But Jacuizzi might be uh, NHL bound next season. He did just come off a very solid rookie season with 56 points in Manitoba. And then defensively, it looks like we might have a couple guys jump up soon too. We have a lot of players in this uh, this organization. We're going to have to make some pretty tough calls eventually, but we have a 1-1 series. I don't know if I want to make any adjustments. 
Let's actually go back to our lines that we had before, because I did make some line adjustments during the season sim that I wanted to readjust again. Those being Stankoven's positioning and all that. So we are going to put Stankoven back to the top line. Irving's going to go back to playing with Perfetti and Tolanius. And I think the rest of this will stay the same. Yeah, I think so. But uh, a lot of these guys are developing really well. Like, there's a good chance we're going to have to make some sort of blockbuster trade to free up roster spots if we need to. Or we decide to trade away prospects because they can't crack or line up something like that. But anyways, we have a 1-1 series headed into our home building. If we can win both these games, that set us up for a good spot. But obviously, it's going to be tough against the Oilers. So let's see if we can at least win one of these two games in front of our fans. We weren't good on home ice during the regular season, so hopefully... It's a bit better here in the playoffs. So game three, let's see what happens in this one. See if we can get more offense than we did last game. First period of game number three. Two nothing Oilers. McDavid and Heinen score. That's not great. We're being outshot 15 to six. So after a good first game, our team is definitely starting to dwindle quite a bit in terms of offensive production. We only have one goal in our last four periods. I definitely have seen this type of thing scripted before where you score a good amount of games in game one our goals in game one but afterwards your team just does not seem to score again for the rest of the series so i am skeptical that our team's able to uh, score the rest of the series and actually win the series but you never know things could happen let's see if we can get back into this game in the second period second period four two yakala scores both of our goals what the heck I thought I was expecting. He's a playmaker, not a sniper. So Yakala got us back into the game pretty much. Connor Brown also scored for them. So we're down 3-2. But that late goal of 15 seconds left that dig allowed. That's a uh, pretty bad one to give up if you're Gabrielle Dig. Shots are 22-21. It's a pretty close game. If we didn't allow that goal of 15 seconds left, we'd be only down by a one goal. Let's see if we could get an early one to get us back into this game. Come on, boys. Long penalty kill to start the game. That's not great to do, as that doesn't give us much offense on our side of things. And McDavid makes it 5-2. to two. New Hook makes it 6-2. to two. Yeah, this Oilers team is definitely another one of those teams that we strive to be like in the future. Luke Misa gets us on the board again, 6-3. to three. And unfortunately, that late goal that we gave up is going to be the game winner. So we lose 6-3 to three in game number 3, and now we are trailing in the series for the first time. Don't really like that goaltending effort from Dag, And obviously our offense needs to be a bit more consistent. Uh, Yakla from Cairo and Kegorodov. And Yakla from Kumpelainen and, and Kane. And we also have Misa from Groshek and Galvis. Yeah, I think we got to make some more adjustments here. I'm surprised that Yakla got first star of the game in that one. But it is what it is. Maybe it was a biased uh, person that made that. Because <laughs> I don't think he deserved to be necessarily first star. But here we are. Um, so... AHL team is getting their playoffs started soon. Let's uh, go back and make some adjustments here going into this next game because Yakal is our leading scorer, which is not something that should be the case considering he's not really a goal-scoring guy unless he's more flat in the playoffs. But we definitely need to find some sort of offense a little bit. So let's balance out our top six a bit. Go Hellenius on the top line instead. Lucius on the second line. Um, Third line could probably stay the same. I, I mean, Yakla's been one of our best players. Let's get Yakla onto that third line, actually. That would be actually not too bad. Yeah, that works. And we'll go with Lindstrom with Kumpelainen and, and Kegorodov. Defensively, we'll probably go back to Palin with Vandermeer, Cairo with Hainola. And goalie-wise, Gabriel Dag has been inconsistent. I don't want to take him out, though, considering he's our future goalie. So let's just keep him in. And keep running pretty much with the regular roster we have. Just to see what happens. Like I said, it's not isn't, isn't the biggest problem if we lose in this first round. Uh, but obviously it would be good to get more and more experience after every single season. But going into these tough teams, it will harden us. So we'll have an easier time when we get to be one of these good teams in the NHL. So uh, let's see if we could tie the series headed to Edmonton because obviously if we lose this game We're on the brink of elimination and need to win three straight, which is not ideal So game four on home ice if we win this game, it's back to square one again. Can we win it? first period of game four three three 
crazy offensive first period. Nurse scores a short handy goal like like three minutes in. Around 201, something like that. But anyways, that's an early goal that we give up. Misa answers back, so good to see Michael Misa scoring, of course. Perbixton made it 2-1. Dreisaitl made it 3-1, but two big goals. Groshik and Kumpelainen, of all people, has us tied at three. We've scored three goals on 12 shots, so one of our four shots, or one of every four of our shots have been a goal. And for them, they've literally scored three goals on eight shots so far. So Gabriel Degg might not be in net to start the next period, which means we might be relying on Malik, which is not great, but it is what it is. Um, but our team has rallied back from 3-1. Can they keep it going? Second period. 4-4. Four, four. Dag was still in net. He gives up another goal. Michael Misa again has tied the game up. So we keep on rallying in this game. Both teams have four goals on 19 shots. So the goaltenders not really doing their job. Um, the defense not really doing their job. The offense definitely has been doing their job. Can we get the lead? We haven't really had the lead yet in this game, so it would be nice to get it for a change. Third period underway in this tied game. Can we get that next goal? Yes, we can, and it's another power play goal for Aiden Irving. And there's another goal from Groshek. The two guys that I think are going to be our future goal scorers on their top six with some big goals here in the third period. Final five minutes. Just looking to lock this game down. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We win 6-4 to four in Game 4, and we have a tie series at 2, headed back to Edmonton. Final shots for 30-27 to 27 in favor of us. Let's go. So we finally got the lead, and it was at the right time possible. So Misa from Stankoven, Groshek from the other Misa, Kampalainen from Kegorodov and Lindstrom. Misa again from Helenius and Kane. Irving from Helenius and Lucius, and Groshek from Yakala, and Vandermeer picks up an assist. Nice. Three stars, Michael Misa, Philip Groshek, and Leon Dreisaitl. So once again, not the best goaltending effort from Dag, but he should be learning. Our offense is definitely learning quite a bit. We've had some very solid wins here, but also some, like, if we didn't lose this game 2-1, to one, we would have been up 3-1 to one in the series, so I think we're in a good spot still, but obviously, like, some of the games we need to be a little bit better in in terms of keeping the puck out of the net. So we have a tie series headed to Edmonton. We might as well keep the, the same team again. Hopefully we can have a good defensive effort soon because it's been a while since we've had one of those. So let's get into game five in Edmonton. See if we could take our first series lead. Well, actually, we had a series lead, I guess, at 1.1-0. But can we take a 3-2 series lead headed home and have a chance to close out the Oilers? First period, 1-0 Edmonton. Connor McDavid. Connor McDavid scoring every single game, which is not going to help us out a lot. Because obviously McDavid is so good of a player, we definitely need to find a way to shut him down a little bit better. But hopefully our young players are learning to play against tough guys like him with all the like tough series we've had in the past. Like Colorado, we've had to play against like really good teams. So we definitely know what to go up against now kind of for the future. Shots are 13-8 in favor of Edmonton. We're down one nothing. Can we get that next goal and tie this game up in a second, potentially? Second period. 3 nothing Edmonton, McDavid, and LeBanc. Or should I say McBank, because that's what I was thinking of last episode for no reason. Shots are 24-19 to 19 in favor of Edmonton. We're down by three goals, and it's looking like we're going to be on the brink of elimination headed home. But maybe we could force a game seven. Hey, goal from Lindstrom. It wasn't shorthanded, but it looked almost like it was a shorthanded one. But yeah, if we can force a game seven, that would be probably the best scenario for us, obviously. We're into the final five minutes, still down by a pair of goals. Do we have any late goals in us? And no, we do not. We're going to lose three to one in game five. And the Edmonton Oilers have us on the brink of elimination. So yeah, our offensive production has been pretty inconsistent here. But that's okay. Lindstrom from Kane. But uh, if we shut down McDavid, we have definitely a better chance at winning games, it seems like. And yeah, Philip Gustafson played much better than he did last game for sure. So we also need a better goaltending effort, and we also need to find ways to score on their goaltending consistently. Uh, so we got a win on home ice, and then we got a four, uh, win on Game 7 in Edmonton. So far, it's been win, loss, loss, win, loss. Is this a win again? Yeah, it could be another win. Who knows? I don't know if there's a real pattern going on right now with this team. Hmm. Uh, let's uh, maybe make some subtle adjustments here. Groshek's now leading our team in points with five points. I'd love to see that. 
Hmm, maybe I should get Groshek into the top six, but I don't know where I would slot him in is the only problem. Uh, what can we do here? Oh, apparently it's better chemistry-wise if I actually put Irving on his right side, so let's do that. And then Lucius can play left side, I guess, or actually... Yeah, we'll do that. Um, hmm. Let's move Misa down, move Perfetti up. Something small like that. Go with Hainola and Vandermeer, Palin and Cairo, Kane and Galvis. Eh, yeah. There's not really much I could do in terms of everything else, so. I could also take Dag out of the lineup. He's been atrocious, but honestly, since he's our goaltender, I'd rather him in over Malik. And I think that's probably much all we're going to do. Let me actually check this for a second. Maybe I'll put Kumpelainen down the middle instead of Kagarodov. Just for something subtle. I don't think it's going to make much adjustments, but... Let's just do that. And yeah, let's see if we could win two straight games against a tough Edmonton Oilers team or just Connor McDavid because he's been destroying us pretty much. But if we could win this game, we go to a game seven. Anything could happen in that game seven, which would be very nice. So let's see what happens here. Game six, real time simulation. We look to force a game seven back in Edmonton. Can we do it? We start early with a power play, but we do not capitalize. Not ideal, but at least it was an opportunity to score. And we do score a little bit afterwards. Philip Groshek, who's leading the team in points, has another goal. He's been actually really good. I'm liking that. Kapanen ties the game up. He had not scored at all for the Oilers up to this point, but he does make it 1-1 here. In the early going, Vandermeer, his first career playoff goal. But once again, they have an answer. It's LeBanc. And it's going to be 2-2 after 1. So kind of similar to that game where it was 3-3 after 1. But it's a 2-2 game after 1 with the shots deadlocked as well at 11-11. So not too much to say about that first period. Other than we need to be better in keeping the puck out of the net. Our offense has been not too bad in this series. But our defense so much is showing its problems just like last year. Alanius makes it 3-2. Let's go. If we can force a game seven, anything can happen. Dry Settle makes it 3 3 as the answer right back again. They always have an answer for one of our goals, which is not great. And they get the lead. I felt like they were going to get the lead. New Hook gives the Oilers their first lead of the night. We're being outshot 32 16 now. So we might have only had five shots in that period, and they had like 20 something. I definitely got to take a look after this game ends, but that second period was dreadful from our uh, defensive standpoint. We gave up way too many shots. Deg kept us in it. We need to have a good third period here if we want to kill all back into this series. Do we have a goal in us? Or are we going to be eliminated in six games in round one? Power play for us. We do not score. Penalty kill. We do kill it off. We're into the final 10 minutes. Still down by a goal. Power play for us again. We do not score. And they score a goal from Wallman. That's probably going to do it. Yep, your Winnipeg Jets are going to be knocked out in the first round again, but uh, it is a learning experience for this young team. And unfortunately, we're going to be packing our bags early again, but that's okay with me. It's a learning experience. The goaltending, though, has been probably the biggest question mark so far these last few years. And same with the defense, but obviously, once we start getting some good prospects in, I think this defensive core can definitely take it to the next level. But we got outshot 43-26 to at the end of that game. Not that great. So yeah, after 11-11 first period, we got a shot 21-5 in that second period, and an 11-10 in the third period. So that second period definitely cost us a game. Not good at all, and it cost us the entire series as well. Yeah, Philip Groshek was definitely our best player, I think, in the series. Uh, he got a goal from Palin and Cairo, and then we had Vandermeer from Misa and Groshek, Helenius from Stankoven and Heinola. And then obviously we let in a lot of goals after that. Uh... Yeah, we definitely need to be better goalie-wise and defensively. That's definitely been a consistent problem in these playoffs for us, but hopefully we're learning how to play better defensively down the road. Let's take a look at our player stats in round one, and then we will simulate up to the awards and get you guys primed up for the draft and all that stuff, which will not be pre-recorded, so at least you guys will have some feedback for me in terms of that. But let's take a look at our player stats here see who did what so let's uh, just go through forwards in general Groshek had seven points he was good Helenius on six points Luke Misa on five points Yakel on four Michael Misa again has not been much of a playoff performer he's been great regular season wise but his playoffs have been inconsistent a bit uh Stankoven on three points only two goals again from Aiden Irving 
Yeah, this guy's a regular season hero, but playoff-wise, only 7 goals in 28 games, shooting 6.5% from his 16% in the regular season. Something has to give. He has to have a good playoffs eventually, right? You would think. Uh, come blind at 2 points. Perfetti wasn't really that great either in the playoffs with only 2 points. Lucius only had 1 point. So a lot of our guys are kind of under simulating, but every single forward had a point in round 1. Defensively, Cairo had four points. He was pretty solid. Kane had three assists. He was actually really good. Vandermeer on two points. Everybody on our NHL team had a point in round one, despite the series loss. So there's at least that as a positive. But at the same time, a lot of guys did not score goals that should have. Kane Grodov had no goals, which kind of makes sense. But Stankoven and Lucia should have scored at least a goal. And then you had other guys like Perfetti only on one goal. Irving on two goals only. So our offense still was a little bit eh. Uh, from a goalie perspective, obviously this was also very troubling as Gabriel Degg once again had very rough stats. Uh, you can see now for back-to-back -back seasons, he has been very bad playoff-wise. So eventually it has to turn the tide, I'd say. But uh, for right now, he is not a good playoff goaltender. And I hope that he improves or else we might have to look to some other options. So there's that. Is our AHL team still in the playoffs out of curiosity? Uh, they are They are tied at 1, it looks like, right now with the Iowa Wild. So we might as well follow them for a little bit as we go up into the offseason. Just to see what they do in terms of maybe going for a Calder Cup. They do win that game 4 nothing. Do they beat Iowa in round 1? Yes, they do. So shout out to the Moose. They are going on to round 2. Where they will meet the Grand Rapids Griffins. So we'll just continue following them, I guess, until we get to the off season. Oh, it's another best three of five series. I didn't even realize that. First two games, let's see. We win one and lose one. Okay, it's not bad. We now change over into Grand Rapids. Can we get a win here? We lose there, and we win there to force a game number five. Whoever wins this will go to the third round on home ice. Can we win it? No, we cannot. We're knocked out in the second round. Damn, I thought our HL team might have had a chance to go for a run this year. But uh, Dennis Cam led the team in points in the playoffs with 13 points in nine games. Not bad. But it does suck that both of our teams got knocked out early again. But uh, all the players are learning, which is good. It's just all about now kind of fitting those puzzle pieces together. And the Chicago Blackhawks are going to win the Stanley Cup in 2030. So shout out to Chicago. Uh, let's take a look at their cup winning team. See who is on the roster. Likely Connor Bedard and all that type of thing, my guess. Unless for some reason Bedard left now. Oh yeah, Nick Ehlers and stuff like that. I think they've won before. Bedard, Monaghan, Reichel. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've seen this team before. We played them a few years ago, one of the two. But, uh, yeah, this is a good team. Nick Ehlers being there is kind of funny still. Dom Kubalik, Connor Garland, Dante Guerin. Yeah, we definitely played them in the playoffs at some stage. But this team has won a cup. Their defensive core is kind of weird, to be honest. And it's actually got some pretty good overalls, but still it's kind of a weird defensive core anyways. Gold thinny wise they do have UL Blomquist who got injured. And Connor Hellebuck has won another Stanley Cup, I think. He is looking like he's going to retire soon, too. I think he did win a Stanley Cup. Actually, yeah, he did win a Stanley Cup with us. So now he's got two cups, at least, uh, since. So that's awesome. Hmm. So, Ehlers and Hellebuck. Stanley Cup champions for the second year in their careers, I'm pretty sure. Let's take a look at those awards. So... Chicago to Stanley Cup champions, and yeah, last year was Edmonton, so we lost to the uh, prior Stanley Cup champions, so that's not a bad problem to have. Boston in the President's Trophy, and it was the Chicago in Toronto Cup Finals. Interesting. Original six. Pasternak to Art Ross, Marner to Hart, Bouchard to Norris, Pasternak to Lady Bing, Eckford the franchise guy does win the Calder because of his 30 goal season. Nick Ehlers wins the Conn Smythe. Kind of funny to see that in Chicago. Yuel Blomquist, the Vesna, and the Jennings. Uh, Faravari, the Masterton. Wingles for Seattle wins the Jack Adams. Uh, Stutzla wins the Selkie. Marner to Lindsay. And Pasternak and Kucherov will share the Maurice Richard. HL-wise, any awards for our HL players? Yes, Graham is the best defenseman in the HL, so shout out to Graham. He probably should get into our defensive core next year, which means we might have to 
think about trading away Hynola in the offseason or something like that. Um, and that's our only award in the minors, but still really good to see from a guy that only has, like, I think, top six potential. So there is that. Now let's see who ends up uh, retiring the season. Draft lottery results, all that stuff. <clears throat> so the San Jose Sharks will have the first overall pick this year. Obviously, last year we had their first, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Arizona at two, Philadelphia at three, Calgary at four, and Pittsburgh at five. Okay. I don't even know what this draft class looks like yet, so I'm excited to see it. But retirement-wise, who retired this season? Anze Kopitar, Brad Marchand retires, Claude Giroux, Eric Carlson, Mika Zibanejad, and Mark Stone, the graveyard of former sins, apparently. Yeah, pretty good retirement class. A lot of really good players are calling it quits here at this point in time. Best goaltender, Jacob Markstrom, Anton Forsberg, okay. Not as much in the goalie department, but still. So there is that uh, coach retirement-wise. Did we lose anybody? Does not look like it right now, which is good. Oh, we did lose Kondratik. I think that's our goalie coach, so I think we need another goalie coach again. Uh, draft interviews. Do I want to do draft interviews? Probably not, but I do want to actually... Hmm. Hey, I'm not going to do any draft interviews. I find they're kind of pointless at times. Okay. So we're going to start off by looking at our progress reports in our contract situation and then also what this draft class looks like. So progress reports, any good growth. Vandermeer is up to an 85. That's awesome. Mises is up to an 85 as well. Wow, we have a lot of guys listed as like second liners and all that type of thing. Cairo up to an 84. Dequeezy is a 79. He should be NHL bound next season, which is awesome. So a lot of guys getting some good growth. Which is good to have that internal competition a little bit. And Dag even grew a little bit more too. So yeah, our defensive core is almost like set up ready to go for next season already in a sense. Because we have like Hynola, who we might trade this offseason still. But Vandermeer, Hynola, Palin, and Cairo all is in our top four. Galvis, Kane, there's Graham, there's Scarlet. Like, we have a lot of guys that should be almost ready to play on that defensive core. Bernarski's a 78 now, too. So we have a lot of guys that we have to make a decision on who we should get that top six ice time. Does that mean trading away somebody? Potentially. Uh, right wing-wise, we saw that Helenius got a lot of growth. Probably mostly statistical. Irving's only an 85, but that's okay. Jacuzzi 79 is really nice. When did we draft Jacuzzi again? Wasn't he a late pick? Yeah, fifth round pick, and he's already ready to go. That's awesome. Um, Groshik, 84. Yeah, everything's still looking pretty good in terms of growing this team. Kegorodov's actually listed as a third-line scoring forward now, so there is a little bit of a problem. Because if we look at our roster right now, we have Misa, who's a first-liner. We have six guys listed as a second-liners. We have a bunch, three guys listed as third-liners and some fourth liners and some depth forwards so in order to get uh, Kegrodov onto that third line we're gonna have to probably move out somebody so he can get into that third line role or just give him more power play time something like that in terms of the HL looks like uh, wow a lot of growth from Caden Wilson 78 at 21 is a top six I like to see that Rafalski 76 ranked as a 75 at 22 Eberle is up to a 70 at 20 yeah, I'm liking the prospect growth a lot, especially from the low lead. 69 at 20 for Enroth, 67 at 20 for Bickle. Yeah, this is uh, looking pretty exciting. Hurt only at 64 at 20, so he's not growing as well. But uh, we do still have a lot of good prospects developing nicely. Yeah, I am very excited. 75 at 20 for Louis Var as well, not bad at all. Bishop on 73. Yeah, we're going to have to make some tough decisions at some point. And in goalie-wise, Scarlet's up to a 73 at 21. King's up to a 66 at 18. That's a pretty big growth. Lorcan in 63 at 21. Eh. In 61, uh, 2 at 21. Or at 19 for Roger Jang. So our prospects developing really, really nice. Let's take a look at the contract situation here briefly. Um, so who's up for renewal this offseason? So Lindstrom, he's an RFA. Uh, we have Ko, who's the UFA. Obviously probably not going to come back. Come blind and RFA. Probably don't bring Kapanen back or Knack. 
Yakel is also an RFA again. So a lot of these guys will probably be uh, ready to get re-signed easily. But we do have to also make some tough decisions trade-wise. Scarlet should be AHL bound next year, which is good. Um, but we are going to have to free up some roster spots, I think, within our team. Because we have a lot of unsigned guys that should get signed. And uh, goalie-wise, Gabriel Dag is the big one. Grant, it looks like he's not going to be much of an NHL goalie at this stage, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. So there's that. And final thing, the draft class. Where are we drafting this year? It's probably like 23rd or something like that again. 21st. Not bad. We don't even have our own second rounder, but we do have Boston's. Okay. So 21st overall. Can we get any good steals in this year's draft? Let's see. Hopefully there's like a good low lead steal or something again. So 21st. We're looking at potentially a top four defenseman in Brent Vossenar. That wouldn't be bad to grab more defenders to be honest, but I don't know. Uh, what else here? We have Menard, who I didn't even apparently scout at all. Varlamov. Looks kind of intriguing. Might be elite. Probably not, though. Ryan Pitt. Probably not that great, to be honest. Julian Fairchild's 20 years old and is two years out. Hmm. This guy could be a medium elite, to be honest, being 20 years old in the first round. That's kind of an intriguing player, to say the least. So, Fairchild might be our pick. Who knows? Unless we want to go for more defenders, because we could always use them. This guy was four years out, so he might be low elite, but I don't know for sure. Uh, let's sort by potential as well, after we look at a couple more players here. Yeah, let's sort by potential. See if there's any good steals. Center slash right winger, medium elite sniper, 19 years old, gem, Edwin Matsumoto. That guy definitely has to be one of our picks, considering he's a guaranteed medium elite, even if he's 19. That's a really solid one to get. Some of these other guys could be elite, but it's really tough to tell at this stage. What about low leads, though? Do we have any guaranteed low elite later round picks? Potentially Pascal Duchesne. No guarantees on him, though. Rohan Rintoul. Rocky Aston, what a name. <laughs> Ross Henley. Okay. Yeah, there might be some low leads, but it's tough to tell at this stage, so... Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Winnipeg Jets franchise mode. So in next episode, we will take it to the draft and re-sign stage. We'll probably make some tough decisions on who to let go of. But I think our team is definitely starting to take form. And we are definitely going to have a lot of internal competition and in who makes the roster next season. Send so anything down below, and I'll see you guys next time.